So if you have students who only gravitate to the same type of book over and over again, or students who spend the first five minutes of silent reading time searching for a book to read and come up empty handed every single time, or maybe you have students who glance at a cover of a book, they quickly decide that it's not for them, and then they go back to wandering the classroom library for pretty much all of your silent reading time, then it's time to give your silent reading time a burst of energy and some new life with this activity. So if even one of those scenarios sounds familiar, then this blind date with a book activity I'm going to share with you is going to get even your most reluctant readers trying out some new titles and actually reading during sustained silent reading. So a quick teacher hack though, before you get started, I want you to determine beforehand whether this activity is going to be mandatory or optional for your students. So if it is mandatory, then you'll need to have at least one book for every student. If it's optional, you can leave the books out as an option for independent reading. So just something to consider and think about. Now, before we dive in, be sure to hit subscribe where you're watching this video for more like this. All right, so let's get started for how to do a blind date with a book. First thing is you wanna hang up some posters or even just write the following words I'm about to say on your board so that you can pique students' interest that something different is happening in class that day. Even if it increases buy-in like just a little tiny bit, it is totally worth it. So you'll wanna write, will it be love at first page? Find your story soulmate. So lame, I know, but also so fun and students will totally love it, I promise you. So just like a blind date is meeting someone you have never seen before, clearly, right, the same thing applies for blind date with a book. So essentially what you're going to be doing is you are wrapping up your books in your classroom library so students can't see like the cover art or read anything on the book jacket. Instead, what you'll do is you'll jot down some key clues that might hook them. And the goal is that students may choose to read a book, hopefully fall in love with it, that they might not normally have gravitated toward. So I wanna give you some examples so you can see this in action and feel free to screenshot this next slide so that you can use these with your students in your own classroom. So as you can see, we have examples for The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, another example of Among the Hidden by Margaret Peterson Haddix, and Ghost by Jason Reynolds. So hopefully that'll give you an idea of kind of the types of things that you'll want to put on your wrapping that you do for this blind date. So essentially you can set up this blind date with a book in two different ways, as I mentioned before. Number one is to make it mandatory for the whole class to participate. You have a whole bunch of books wrapped, labeled for students to choose from, etc. You might do something like that, you know, two to three times a year to get students trying out different genres that they typically haven't read in the past. The other thing that you can do is you can keep a few books covered and labeled in your classroom library for students to pick if they want to. So side note, teacher hack, if either of those options makes you feel like this is just way too much work on your part in a little bit, I'm going to give you another way to get your students to actually create all of the blind date labels with all of the clues and even get them to do the wrapping. So I'm going to share that in just a second. So like I said, whether or not you choose to make this mandatory or optional, you do want to encourage students to stick with the book they chose for a decent amount of time unless they absolutely think it is just a terrible match for them. And something that you could say is you can remind students that when people date, sometimes it takes more than a few minutes, a couple dates to see if there is a connection. So whether students found a perfect or terrible match with the book they chose, have them leave a date review. And this date review is an opportunity for students to reflect on their selection with questions that include the following. So you'll have on a scale of one to five, how would you rate this book and why? You'll also want to include what kind of person would you recommend this book to and why? And lastly, what kind of person would you not recommend this book to and why? So students can fill out this date review information on small cards that you've copied and leave them in your classroom library and explain to your students that their date review may help others who will consider reading that book in the future. Now, back to that teacher hack where your students are actually creating the blind date labels and honestly orchestrating this whole activity for you, this is the best. So you can easily put your students in charge. Explain to them that it's their turn to set someone else up with a good book, like setting someone else on a blind date. So have them follow these steps to create a fun reading experience for a fellow classmate. So number one, instruct students to choose a book from your classroom library that they have read. 
Then you're gonna have them fill out a blind date label with three clues. These clues should spark a student's interest and give them a tiny peek into the story without giving anything super important um, away. So some good ideas for clues might include, and I'll put this on the screen for you so you can take a screenshot of this as well. You might include the book's first line, the book's last line, another intriguing quote from the book, a word, a phrase, or a sentence that shows a topic from the story, a word, a phrase, or a sentence that describes a problem in the story, a word, a phrase, or a sentence that describes an important character from the story, a phrase that shows what type of readers would like the story, or any other fun ideas that you have. And so to save time, you don't have to use an actual blind date label. Students can also just write their info on a post-it note or an index card. So you can make this super, super simple if you want to. So then your students will wrap the book and you can have students use wrapping paper, construction paper, whatever, it doesn't matter. You just wanna make sure that the students can't see the book cover through the paper. So that's the only key caveat with that. Um, students can make it fancy if they want to, you know, add a little string or a ribbon, however they wanna set it up. Like you really get to give your students agency with this. And then students will tape or glue their blind date label to their wrapped book. And so to add some rigor to this activity, if you wanna take it to the next level, you can have students explain to you in writing why they chose this particular book and why they selected the clues that they did. Then once students do all of that, they should return their wrapped and labeled book along with their book explanation to you. And you can then do a whole class blind date activity with every single week or so, put a few of the mystery books in your classroom library for students to check out, super simple, and you didn't have to do any of the work. So good, right? All right, what I want you to do is mark a date in your lesson plan book for when you are going to try this blind date with a book activity with your students. And feel free to let me know in the comments section as well. All right, for more videos like this, make sure that you hit subscribe.